Hey you guys, it's Crystal. Um, every time I go to try to film, um, my dog Memphis here wants to be all up in my face. So I'm just gonna give him attention and we'll just go with it, okay? This is Memphis. Welcome Memphis. Um, so this video is going to be in regards to uh, the poll that we recently had on Coupon Nerds Facebook group. Um, actually, our, the votes were tied for first place. Um, the one was um, one like film a complete cooking on a budget budget meal, and the other that was also tied for first place was um, dinners that we eat for one week. So I'm going to film this video um, dinners that we eat for one week. Today is the first day. Uh, dinner is going to be super uh, quick and simple, and so I'm about to get started. I just wanted to preface this video with, um, I don't know, a public service announcement. So, this is a dinners we eat for a week. Um, like I said, I'm taking a break from couponing during this time, which is why I did the poll on our Facebook group for suggestions of future videos um, while I'm not doing, like, haul videos. So, I'm doing these videos... Um, in the style of like cooking on a budget, if you've been following our Facebook group for any length of time, I do a lot of cooking on, cooking on a budget meals. I do um, probably an annually or biannually um, clean out your freezer, live off your stockpile kind of challenges if you follow any other YouTubers that do that. Um, I do that as well. And so this will be kind of like that, just using what I have on hand. I'm not going to the store um, meal planning and then say, okay, I got to go to the store for this and this and this and this. I have um, plenty of stuff at my house as is because I'm a couponer. I get a lot of stuff for free. Um, and so it might not look super extravagant, but I'm going to use what I have. And that's my favorite tip on um, how to save money, how to cook on a budget, how to do all the things using what you have and meal planning around what you have instead of saying, Oh, this sounds nice, and then going to the store and buying all of the ingredients for that. So, that's what I'm going to be doing. So, if it looks a little weird, um, I'll show you what I mean here in a minute because I have a few different meats. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get started, and I hope that this helps you um, with some inspiration. I don't know that I'll have anything crazy, um, but maybe some cooking tips along the way, uh, money-saving tips, um, stuff you didn't really think of or that you your family has never tried, and... Um, whatever that looks like. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy this video of dinners we eat for one week. The first cooking on a budget meal that I'm gonna do for this week is Sloppy Joe's. And this looks like um, a little bit of a weird, like eclectic kind of um, mixture here, but I will explain. These I got at Target, these um, pretzel sliders. It, they were like $4.79 or $4.99 at Target. I ended up getting like $4.64 or so back with Shopkicks, so I paid maybe 30 cents for these or so. Um, again, I just use what I have. Okay, so this is what I'm doing my Sloppy Joes with today. Another tip on saving you some money. This organic grass-fed beef is like $7.69 or $6.79 or something crazy, almost $7 at Target per pound. I think it went up. That was when I bought it. I think it's $7 or $8 now. Um, this was in the freezer. Anyway, it was $6 something when I bought it. Um, it was on sale maybe for $6.79. They had this $5 off package, or of this package, because it was about to um, be the best buy date. Um, so I got $5 off, and I have a Target red card, so I got 5% off extra um, so I paid like a dollar maybe 27 um, or a dollar 17 very low for this and again it's organic 100% grass-fed I know I'm gonna mix it with other stuff please don't come for me um, again using what I have so this is beef this is ground turkey I got from Aldi for like a dollar 89 um, and this is ground chicken I believe it was $3.99 at Target and 5% back and $3 off because this was about to be um, the best by date. So I just bought it, popped it all in the freezer. So this is what I'm going to do. I also have some chopped up red, orange, and yellow um, sweet bell peppers that I'm going to throw in. And we'll just do these. We'll just have them a little more sweet, which will be good with what we have and um, these buns. It'll work. 
and stay tuned towards the end of this meal video um, portion and you can find out what the coke is for i have all my seasonings behind me i'm gonna get um, this stuff in the pan and get it all broken up and started and then i'll show you what that will look like okay guys so i put all of the meat in here i broke it up kind of mixed it um, around with each other i wanted to say at this point if you're doing all beef um, maybe there's a lot of people that won't season at all at this point because if you're using all beef you're going to have a lot of fat in here and um, once you go to drain out that fat just to keep the meat obviously for your sloppy joes a lot of the seasonings will go out into that fat um, and so a lot of people won't season. I cannot put anything in a pan without seasoning so I'm going to season this. I don't think I'll have to strain a whole lot because like I said I have a pound of turkey, a pound of chicken, and a pound of beef. Um, so we'll see. I'm going to definitely put salt and pepper and maybe a little bit of all the things um, first and then like I said we'll go from there and make that decision. Um, you definitely, because I am making these homemade, that means I'm not going to, um, sorry I'm distracted, these are so awesome, my dad got me these for my birthday, they're amazing, 10 out of 10, highly recommend, they're automatic, you just tilt and it grinds your salt or pepper for you, so that's really cool, um, got distracted, always season, especially if you're making stuff from home, because, um, like you saw before, I don't have any Mamwich. I don't buy canned, like, Sloppy Joe mix. Um, I just make it from home. So you definitely want to season it well. And um, I, unfortunately, cannot cook with fresh onion because of some health stuff with my husband. He cannot have something with the oils. So I use minced onion. If you have anybody in your family, um, that would be a great option because onion offers a lot of flavor. So that's why you don't see any in here. Um, also, I haven't added my um, bell peppers yet that I had um, diced up and already, you know, ready prepped in the freezer because I'm going to cook this down for a while and so I don't want these to disintegrate. So I'll just keep these off to the side. They're already like falling out already from the freezer a bit. So I'm going to keep them to the side and not forget. But definitely adding some minced onion. Like I said, you want to season well. That's the trick. When you buy stuff at the store, um, like store bought, it all has so much salt and preservatives and stuff. Not judging, a thousand percent not judging. We'll, you'll see, I use all kinds of canned stuff. Um, not adding that yet. So just season well. That's why the store bought stuff tastes so good because they have so much seasonings and salt and all the things. You can definitely cut down on the salt and stuff, but season it well. Nobody wants to eat bland food. So I'm just going to give this a mix, and obviously I can add more seasoning later. Um, but I also don't want to waste a bunch, so I put the minced onion in there and some salt and pepper and just a tad of garlic powder for right now, um, just to season it as it cooks, and then um, I'll check out the status, like if I have to drain a bunch, and then add later. So you can always add more. Obviously, you can't really take out, so you don't want to make it too salty, especially at this point. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to um, stick around, cook all this meat, and then once I go to add the next steps. I will see you then. The meat in here is almost all the way cooked. There's still a bit of pink that I see, but um, because I want them to kind of get some of the flavor, I'm going to go ahead and open these um, peppers and dump them in. Again, you can cut up bell peppers right now, but these are just from, um, I use the Flash Foods app. You can check out my videos for information or like um, the description box. I have a referral link. Um, YouTube, I'm um, sorry, on Facebook, I always have my referral links in like the featured announcement section of our group. Um, they offer, their goal or mission is to eliminate food waste. So they offer a lot of um, discount on foods that are like about to go bad or whatever. So when I found find really amazing deals or at the local grocery store, like maybe 25 cents for a giant bell pepper or whatever because it's starting to go bad. I will um, buy it clearance, cut it up already, pop it in the freezer, and then it makes meal time like super simple. So I'm just going to go ahead and stir these in until um, the meat is completely cooked. Okay, so I don't see any more pink in the meat, and so I mix it all well. Um, I feel like I have more liquid for some reason. Maybe it's because I used um, chicken and turkey 
Um, they maybe had more water in them than fat. Um, but you can see I have all this liquid here. That's not good. We want to get rid of that. So I have a, um, what I use, you can do what works for you. I have a little strainer here and I place it on top of a glass measuring cup. This is four cups. Just make sure whatever you use can handle the heat because this will generally be really hot like hamburger grease, like beef burger grease, and um, it will melt anything plastic. So just keep that in mind. So I like to use this glass um, and the strainer and just kind of try not to make a mess and dump out as much liquid as I can and return it to the pan. Okay, so I wasn't successful. I did make a bit of a mess, but um, here we are. Are we really cooking if we're not making a mess? Um, yeah, so there's that. This works well. Um, this is the water and grease, oil, whatever, fats um, that I strained out. Whatever like fell out of the pan into this as I was just trying to tip over to get the liquid out. Um, my strainer caught it and then I just dumped it back in the pan. So that's why I recommend this method. But again, whatever works for you. If you have a method that um, you think would benefit us, leave it in the comment section. It could really um, help somebody else. So I'm just I have this all back in the pan on the heat again. Um, just cooking it a little bit, moving it around. I can see a little bit of um, oil, but that's going to be okay. That's just flavor. As long as there's no puddles, there's no anything like slimy, greasy. Um, yeah, so just getting a little bit of color on that. Just trying to cook off any extra liquid. So at this point, I'm going to add more seasonings because I strained all of this stuff and now I'm not worried about ruining any of my stuff. So usually I'll just take like a piece of, this is my family, so no worries, I'm not serving this to anyone, my hands are clean. Um, usually I'll just take a bite and see like what the meat tastes like, and then fuse it accordingly. <coughs> In my opinion, it needs a lot more salt and seasoning because I didn't feel like I, for three pounds of meat, you'd be surprised um, how much seasoning is required for these. So I'm going to add some more seasoning. actually do like to use this iodized salt. I do have pink Himalayan salt you seen me use earlier. I also have kosher salt over there. If any chefs are out here, don't cringe. I actually do cook with iodized salt because of um, thyroid stuff that I've battled over the years. This has really been amazing. So if you're out there watching this and you battle like hypothyroidism or whatever, look into iodine. They have supplements. Um, I didn't even have to take a supplement. This is like 40 cents, 42 cents at Walmart. Cooked with iodized salt, uh, life changer. So that is a free tip today. So I'm just gonna add some salt. I'm done with this. Um, all the things seasoning to dad. It's a rub my dad makes. Basically a much better um, seasoning salt. It's got paprika, onion powder, garlic powder. Uh, all the things, but not with a ton of salt or sugar like what you buy at the store. And the main ingredient, like the seasoning I'll probably use the most, is chili seasoning. Um, it's chili powder, a little bit of cumin. Uh, I don't even remember what all I put in there. You can Google probably. And then without adding anything else, I'm going to mix this around because it, to it will toast the spices. And I think I might add a little more. We'll see. Um, putting this in the heat, it'll toast the spices and actually bring out more flavor than if you just use this and then poured like a can of sauce or ketchup or whatever on top of it. Toast the spices, it brings out like all the extra things to spices. Um, if you've never done this, I highly recommend it, especially with tacos or whatever. Um, it will change your cooking life, for real, and your family will be glad. So um, just spread it around so that the spices will hit that heat. This gives it extra like depth of flavor. Again, we're making this from home. We don't have like canned manwich or anything. Um, so we definitely want the flavor to be there so that our kids or family members, whoever it is, won't miss that um, stuff that the price just keeps going up and up on. I'm adding a little bit more chili seasoning and salt and all the things. And of course, black pepper that I can grind one-handed because it's automatic. Super amazing. Thank you, Dad, if you see this video. Again, just going to go toast it. Now stick with me. This really smells amazing. I highly recommend you do this at least once to try it. 
we made, I make these sloppy joes for like all the things, all the birthdays, baby showers, gender reveals, um, all kinds of stuff. Anything where a bunch of people are getting together, especially like you can even buy like a 10 pound package of meat. Like we've got graduation parties, all the things. Get a 10 pound package of meat, cook a ton, bunch of peppers, tomatoes, which I didn't add, but it'll be fine. Use what you have. You don't even have to add peppers. Um, I'm just adding peppers because honestly, we're not going to have any like fruits or vegetables probably as a side. Um, so this, like I had mentioned, flash foods before. Um, their goal is to eliminate food waste and I shop through their app often and get all kinds of deals. So we have a three pound tub of potato salad in the fridge that I got for $1.50 I believe. And this is grandma's potato salad with egg in it. So I think the regular price is like $5.99 or I don't know. Anyway, it's expensive. I got it for $1.50. So it's 50 cents a pound. I think we're just going to have these sloppy joe sliders with that. So um, again, this is cooking on a budget. Not every budget meal has fresh vegetables, fresh fruits. Sometimes you use pan, sometimes you have none. So I'm not saying that I'm going to have a perfectly well-balanced meal every section, uh, every meal in this video. Um, but I do understand veggies are important. Here's my attempt. Actually, bell peppers are fruit, if you didn't know that. But here we go. Now, time for the Coke. So, you don't have to use Coke. I almost never actually have name brand Coke in my house. But here we are. Got it on deal with uh, Swagbucks and Shutout 51, which are rebate apps. I have referral links to in the description box if you are interested in joining. You can check out my previous videos on how to use those apps. Um, just helps me save money. Um, Coke is like five or like six to seven or eight dollars a 12 pack um, in my area, and um, I was able to get it for like two dollars and forty cents per pack or for 12 pack at Sam's Club using Swagbucks deal and. Um, check out 51. So I have Coke. You don't have to use it. Um, I often use what I have from couponing. So we had a ton of like Pepsi Zero, um, different things that come out and we don't particularly like that. Any dark pop will do. If you have a Dr. Pepper, if you have like um, Aldi brand cola is actually really delicious. Um, Walmart brand, whatever you have, a dark cola. You can use Dr. Pepper like I said. Um, I just, I'm going to use one can if you're not used doing three pounds like I am, you can just use half a can, drink half a can, um, or whatever, or use a whole can. You just need to reduce it longer. So what I'm going to do, I poured that whole can in there. That gives it some sweetness, gives it some savoriness. Um, it'll pair well with all the chili powder and different seasonings that we added in here. So now again, we drained all that stuff just to add more liquid. I don't know if you can see, but there's a lot of liquid in here. Um, so we're just going to, um, I already brought the heat up. So that's why you hear all the noise. Now I'm going to bring the heat down lower and I'm going to let this simmer in that Coca-Cola or whatever dark cola that you choose um, so that all the flavor can mingle and it'll saturate the meat and um, make a really nice whatever. So the um, liquid will reduce the longer that it simmers. Um, just stir occasionally and then once most of the liquid is gone and it'll actually look a little bit thicker, then we'll add some condiments to this to make it more saucy and then we'll be done. Okay, I just wanted to mention, usually I have way more liquid than that, so I'm not sure what happened here, but I just felt like I wanted a little bit more. So often, most of the time, actually, I do this with a two liter and just eyeball it. So um, when I'm doing a smaller batch, like maybe one or two pounds, I use like three quarters of this, just drink a few sips that's left, um, or a whole can for like two pounds. And so this being three pounds plus a bunch of peppers, um, I used an additional can, less than half of this. So um, as you can see now, there's like way more liquid. I just wanted that because I wanted more of the meat and peppers to be covered a little better as it's simmering and then it'll give it a better flavor. I don't want anything dry in here um, or tasteless. We want this to taste good. So I added a little less than half a can. Okay, so now we have most of the liquid um, has been cooked out. I actually, because it's pretty late, usually we eat dinner earlier than this, I'm tired. I cranked up the heat a bit to, to reduce the liquid faster. So if you ever find yourself like, oh, I can't let it simmer or whatever, um, it's okay. It's still going to be good. So I cranked the heat up a bit um, to quicken the process. 
like I said before, um, we make this for all kinds of like birthdays, special occasions, um, and I like it because I can cook the meat, season it, you know, add the stuff. Once I pour in the pop um, or whatever kind of dark cola, I can let it simmer for a really long time. I can add extra pop and let it simmer on low for hours. That's my favorite. Um, and again, it's hands off, so just stir it every once in a while while you're cleaning, cooking, doing whatever in preparation for the event or just laundry or whatever the day looks like for you. Um, so simmer it pretty easy, hands off. Today, like I said, I cranked up the heat, so I expedited the process. Now that most of the liquid is gone, I'm going to like make our sauce. So you can add whatever you like. This is just what I do. I get all of my condiments for free um, doing couponing, especially with shop kicks. Um, actually, my woo sauce, how do you um, pronounce this? Because I'm not even going to attempt to it. I call it woo sauce. Everybody knows what I mean when I say it. This, I'm just going to do a tiny splash for the um, flavor. And as you can see also, like, well, hopefully you can see. Um, I have weird lighting in my kitchen, in my whole house actually, but um, now you can tell this is more brown. It's not as pale since we did use a couple, like two pounds of chicken and um, turkey, which are like more pale. So um, the color looks better now, and I'm going to add just a little bit of um, sauce. I do not recommend craft barbecue sauce at all, but like I said, I get them for free couponing. So here we are. The hickory smoke will just add a little bit of flavor. Um, again, not going to add too much because I don't want to taste like barbecue. I just want a little bit of the flavor. A little bit of mustard. And then a good deal of um, ketchup. Again, you can add like a can of any kind of diced tomatoes, petite diced tomatoes, whole to crushed tomatoes, whatever um, floats your boat. You could do that also. Um, I'm just going to add a good deal of... Um, ketchup because I think I'm going to do a good bit of tomatoes. I'm going to make chili later this week, I believe. That's the plan, so don't quote me on that. And I might have to get another one. So I just add a little bit at a time and then stir and see. Um, I might have to get another ketchup because I'm making three pounds. I wasn't planning on making three pounds, but I just figured, um, like I just mentioned, I'm going to be making chili later this week, and so usually... With sloppy joes or tacos or whatever, if I can just cook extra one time, um, these all freeze like super well. So if we don't, if, if we only eat half of it, well, I can freeze half of it, and then next time I want to make sloppy joes, I just thaw it in the fridge overnight and then heat it up the next day for dinner. So it's super easy. Everything's already cooked um, and tastes amazing. So I don't know that I'm gonna freeze our leftovers, but I am going to make chili, or plan to anyway, and I will need meat for that, and this has peppers in it, so I think our extras will just go to chili. Again, it's cooking once, it's saving me time to brown meat, cook meat, you know, drain it, all that stuff. I only had to do that one time, and then, um, makes dinner super quick super easy next time less time washing dishes less time cooking i'm not reusing the same stuff it just saves lots of time and sanity makes life much more easier to make stuff at home and cook every single day if you have these little tips to help you save some time it really makes your life much more manageable so i kind of like this but i'm going to taste it First, um, it might need a little more ketchup, I'm not sure, but just taste as you go once your meat is cooked, of course. Um, I'm going to taste this and see. And get it as saucy as you like. Like I said, usually there's a little more sauce, so if you want to add a little more ketchup or whatever kind of um, condiments that you like, the key is the ketchup. That's what makes it more saucy, like Sloppy Joe, and holds it together on the bun instead of it falling apart. I think that's definitely enough ketchup. I'm going to add a little bit more salt and pepper. And then I think we're good. Maybe we'll do a smidge more for a little more saucy effect. 
But guys, that's it. Homemade sloppy joes. And it's using stuff that you have at home. Again, if you're couponing, if you do shop kicks or different things, um, follow our channel. You can get this stuff for free all of the time. And so, as somebody like, I don't like ketchup, personally. Um, I just don't like ketchup. Um, I do keep, I like ketchup in these because it doesn't taste like ketchup. It tastes like molasses flavor from the dark cola. It tastes like sweet from the peppers um, and the cola. It's just a nice, good flavor all around. And definitely doesn't taste like ketchup or like processed canned manwich. Again, most of my family really enjoys manwich. I'm not knocking. That's what we grew up on. Um, I'm just saying, try this. If you are couponing and getting this stuff for free, this was super cheap. You saw I spent less than $4 on three pounds of meat um, to do this. I spent probably 99 cents or less on all of those peppers that I cut up um, that I got discounted and froze so they didn't go bad. And salt and pepper, I mean, seasonings are very cheap um, if you buy them in bigger containers. And yeah, this is it. So we're just going to serve these on some slider buns that I also got the whole package for like 34 cents at Target. And this, this is the three pound grandma's potato salad with egg that I got um, at Meyer through the Flash Foods app, $1.50 for three pounds. So we can use this um, as size of lunch. It's gonna go pair with this. And like I said, this is cooking on a budget so I won't necessarily have a perfectly balanced um, like dietary nutritional whatever um, week of dinners but we have a little bit of the pepper here um, I mean it is what it is sometimes on a budget you can't have all the veggies and fruit okay I thought I would show the finished product again you can serve this with a mixed veggie canned veggie um, a steamable veggie um, fruit salad whatever that looks like for you it's late we're hungry and uh, this is what we're having today so um, these are what it looks like plated with the pretzel buns um, some of them you know if you don't want pretzel buns if you have hamburger buns hot dog buns bread uh, make your own I was hoping to make my own for this video to share with you guys but it didn't happen so maybe in the future if that's something you want to see comment down below let me know so that's what we had here's our sloppy joe here's our potato salad 50 cents a pound and um, this is our meal for today it's not quite night time right now but for tonight's dinner um, I'm gonna do a little bit of prep so it's easier the time of I have this bag of potatoes I'm not gonna use the whole thing but I did get this five pound bag for 99 cents at Meyer. That's why it's so important to shop deals because potatoes are very expensive now. Um, I grabbed these out of my freezer. It's already cooked ham. Still had um, ham that we weren't going to use, so I just left it in slices and froze it for a quick and easy dinner. That's what we're going to do. So I already cooked this previously, had it in the freezer, and it's been thawing overnight in the fridge. Um, so we're going to use this for dinner. Usually I do green beans with this, but I just used a ton of green beans during Thanksgiving um, for green bean casserole. So I think I'm going to use these collard greens. Um, I got these at the discount store. Um, I don't necessarily love the seasoning that Margaret Holmes uses, um, but for quick and easy dinner, it's something that they're good for you. Um, they sell at the discount store for $1.09, but I got them half off, so whatever, 54 cents or so and then also when I cook my hams I save the ham broth to use in dishes where I'm gonna like cook these in the future with some potatoes and green beans etc cook the um, cook that stuff in the ham broth to like impart more flavor I recently if you've seen on Facebook or any of the platforms coupon nerds has um, had to move around so much stuff in my freezer to fit all of the ice cream products that I got paid so much to buy and so, um, somewhere along the line, I hid my frozen ham broth and absolutely cannot find it. We have multiple freezers and stuff. Everything's like so full to the brim. Can't find it. Not going to waste my, any more time. So what I'm going to use is this roasted chicken base. You can buy it at a restaurant store. Um, I got mine obviously at Gordon, formerly known as GFS. Um, you just take a little bit of it and add it with water, kind of like chicken bouillon, but um, more flavor because this is, I'm trying to open it, I'll show you later. Um, 
more flavor because it's like literal roasted chicken and chicken juices like just cooked down for all the flavor. So I'm going to go ahead and wash some potatoes, cut them up, um, put them in the crock pot to get started so they'll be nice and soft and flavorful. Add some water and that chicken base um, for my broth. And of course, I'm going to use these slow cooker liners in my crock pot. Um, this is not a budget. Usually when I'm cutting corners, like trying to squeeze every penny out of my budget that I can. We don't do paper plates. We don't do plastic silverware. We don't do, like, these are luxuries. So I said that to say this did cost a little, little extra, but if you get these on subscribe and save um, through Amazon Prime, I only pay $3 and some change for this because I keep having it reordered every uh, three to six months, depending on how often I'm using them. You can change them for $3 and something. So I don't know the math, but it's almost three for a dollar. And um, these are lifesavers because you put it in here, you cook, grab it, throw it away. Sometimes, depending on what I'm making, I have to wipe that a little bit. But the cleanup is so super easy. It's worth my time and peace to use these. And again, super cheap. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll get started and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, really quickly, I wanted to show you what I was talking about. This is what the um, chicken base, this is roasted chicken base you can buy. They have like um, concentrated beef base, base, different things. Again, it's just cooked down meat and juices and stuff uh, for flavor. So this will be um, kind of like a chicken broth, but far more flavorful. Um, what I just do, that's why it kind of looks wonky in there. I just take a good bit. That's about a tablespoon. I know it's hard to tell. Um, I have a teeny tiny whisk here. I just do that. I have some hot water I've already got out. This is about two and a half cups. Um, I just put it in there, whisk it around a little bit. Um, the base stays in my fridge, so it's very cold. Um, that way it doesn't spoil. But so it might be a little bit clumpy. It seems like it's integrating pretty well. If yours is a little bit clumpy, it's not going to matter. It's going to cook for a while in a crock pot, so it'll all like dissolve and incorporate. Um, and again, this is just to have some flavor. You can just put water or whatever, but um, potatoes can take a lot of salt, a lot of seasoning, um, and this is just going to give it more flavor. I'm only going to do the um, cook the potatoes right now, and then closer to dinner time, maybe an hour or two, because I'm going to cook these on low for probably three or four hours. Um, closer to dinner time, maybe an hour before, I'll pop the ham in here um, just so that the ham can also soak up some more flavor and um, prepare like the collard greens on the stove top separately. Um, so I just want to make sure I have enough liquid. I might have to add more um, and also more of the base, but I'm just going to start with this and add some salt and pepper and just a little bit of garlic powder, maybe some onion powder too, just to season the potatoes well and then go from there. So here's what it looks like what we're going to start out. I did cut my potatoes, put them in here. I do leave my skins on. There's a lot of um, like fiber, like good nutrients in there. If you don't like the peels um, for your family or they won't eat them, you can peel your potatoes just to save me time and also it's more nutrition. I left the skins on mine, but that's personal preference. I um, tasted the broth. It is a bit salty and so I only added pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder at this time. And then the three and a half cups was not enough. So I did a total of six cups of water in here because you want the potatoes covered. And also um, I'm going to add more stuff in here. So um, six cups of water in here and about three pounds of potatoes. So this is going to cook on low for at least three hours and then we'll check status at that point. Actually, it's been about four and a half hours because I lost track of time, but... I did check it at three hours and it was not cooked enough. Um, I like to make sure that the potatoes are fork tender, which means when I poke, the fork can easily go through. So to cool this down and slow down the cooking process, because it's not quite dinner time, I'm going to go ahead and throw in the slices of ham and let this cook for probably another hour. So all I did here for like the last half hour or so that the, the ham and potatoes are cooking, I just opened the can of collard greens, um, dumped them in here. Also, if you remember from the beginning, when I started this, I had another small bag with just a few pieces of ham um, in there. I kept that separate, didn't add it to the crock pot. I'm going to add it and um, cook this, like simmer it for at least half an hour or so. I only added a teeny tiny bit of um, salt and sugar, and then I'm going to also add some ground pepper to this. 
Here's the final product. We're about to get it plated up. I did take the ham out just to put it on a plate so I could get to the potatoes. Um, I should have listened to myself in the beginning when I said I was going to add salt and pepper into all the things. I did not add salt just because I was concerned about it being a little too salty. Um, could use some more salt. So I did add some more salt. Keep that in mind. But again, taste as you go. Um, this is our grains with them little bits of ham and then our ham. So plate it up however you want. We're just going to put this on the side, smush it a little bit with some butter and um, sour cream. Obviously salt and pepper too. And um, yep, this is our dinner for today. Tonight's dinner is super easy, not showing any cooking of it or whatever. A uh, family member had some pulled pork, barbecue pulled pork left over. That's what we're going to have with some leftovers that we already have because there is a lot of food in our fridge, whether it's potato salad, greens, um, mac and cheese, some potatoes, uh, different stuff left. So we're going to have pulled pork sandwiches and uh, whatever leftover sides or whatever anyone wants to eat. That's our dinner for today. Okay, tonight's dinner is going to be a breakfast bake, so I have, I'm actually going to use an entire dozen of eggs, which I don't know if you can count them as free because they're from my chickens. Um, obviously, they're unwashed because they'll last three to six months in the fridge unwashed, um, so I'll get them cleaned up, crack them in a pan. I'll brown some of the sausage. I have two pounds. This is a lot for four people, but um, we're gonna have this for leftovers over the next few days for like breakfast, lunch, snacks, or even a dinner um, in a couple of days. So I like to cook more. Usually I'll separate it and freeze half. Like I'll cook everything once um, and just divvy up in different pans so I can freeze half. Um, I don't have room in my freezer, so I'm making extra, but we're going to have this for breakfast, lunch, snacks, um, and possibly a leftover kind of dinner down the road in a few days. So I'm going to cook up the sausage, season it up a little bit, get my eggs cracked in a separate bowl with a little bit of milk, seasonings, and hot sauce, and some cheese. Um, and yeah, we're going to have a breakfast bake. I'll show you the steps. Okay, so I have the um, sausage cooked and I just kind of broke it up a little bit as I was um, browning it. The oven isn't quite preheated. I usually do this to 350 degrees, um, but while it's finishing, I realized that I didn't finish the breakdown on this. So the sausage I actually got at Meyer through the Flash Foods app, which I have my link in the description box if you want to sign up for that and get a reward um, between five and eight dollars they change it depending on whatever their promotion is at the time um, got it for 99 cents each um, and just popped it in the freezer and so this is two pounds of sausage usually I do regular sausage this is Italian sausage so I made sure not to put too much Italian seasonings in my eggs I went ahead and scrambled these eggs um, also forgive me if I feel if you feel like I'm going back and forth because um, this is still new to me I wanted to make sure if you were wondering why I had milk included in the um, ingredients when I started out this portion of the dinner, it's because when you add milk to your eggs, it actually makes them fluffier. And so um, if you're on a budget, actually water does the same thing, or if you're counting calories um, or whatever, and you don't want to add milk, you can also add water, even if you pop them in the microwave in the morning with a little bit of water or do them on the stove to scramble eggs or for your breakfast bakes. Um, just add a little bit of water or a little milk. It makes them fluffier. Um, so that's why I had milk. In case anyone's wondering if you're new here, don't cook or maybe you've been cooking for a while and you didn't know that. Um, now you know. The hot sauce I also add for extra flavor. I love spicy stuff. Um, a couple people in my family do not. This does not make it spicy. I just do a few splashes of this. It just makes it flavor, like it adds flavor. It does not make it spicy. So right now I'm just making it flavorful out of a little bit of salt, garlic, powder, onion powder, pepper, and a little bit of hot sauce and milk and just scrambled my eggs. Um, I'm going to, I think it'll all fit in this pan. Um, the, I'm actually, okay. Here's what we're going to do. And here's a trick. If you're a little skeptical of this, I totally understand because I thought so too. I thought this was really insane. I saw somebody do this on YouTube and I'm like, that's really weird. Why would anyone do that? There is a little bit of grease in here and I'm actually going to cook my breakfast bake in this if it'll fit. 
Um, sometimes I do use um, aluminum foil pans to save time, especially if they're going to go in the freezer. I can just wrap them in saran wrap or wrap them in foil and then in saran wrap, um, pop them in the freezer to make them last. I'm going to cook it in here though this time. And there's a little bit more oil than I would like. And so what I'm going to do is just, instead of like straining this like we did the hamburger before, I'm just going to put these paper towels in here and kind of use my spoon and like stir around just to pick up a little bit of the grease because I don't mind if some of it's there. It'll kind of act like if I would use an aluminum foil pan, um, I would spray like with nonstick spray so that it doesn't stick. So the oil that will be left here, grease or fat, whatever you want to call it, um, will kind of act as that so it won't stick to the pan. But um, I don't want it like like drenched in oil. So I'm just going to go get the majority of it with this paper towel. And then um, the paper towel allows me to do this in the pan. And I don't have to wash a bunch of like another strainer and um, glass measuring cup, etc. So I cleared up most of the oil. And then this will just be trash. Hopefully you saw that. I'm going to spread the sausage on the bottom. Now, my favorite thing about breakfast bakes is the fact that there are no rules. So you use what you have, which is also um, makes it more budget friendly. And um, again, there are no rules. Sometimes I have potatoes or you can use shredded hash browns. I've done all kinds of stuff with these breakfast bakes. Um, right now, I'm actually on top of my um, sausage. I'm going to add some tomatoes. I have some like basically Rotel tomatoes and green chilies that I got for free. Um, I have some fire roasted, if you can see that, fire roasted tomatoes I got at the discount store and some salsa verde that I also got for free. Um, I'm going to add that. I like the flavors that it adds. And again, you can use whatever you have. Sometimes I'll put um, tomatoes for my garden in here or extra peppers that you've seen me have in the freezer. So I'm going to add this stuff in here and then pour on my egg mixture. Well, um, after I get the tomatoes in here, I will put the cheese on, add my egg mixture, and then pop it in the oven. So I'm just going to go ahead and spread these throughout so it's kind of even. I did put that cheese back in the fridge, most of it, um, to stay cool while all of this cooked. So I'll get that and add the cheese and use what you have. If you have blocks of cheese, shred it. It works wonders in here. I just got uh, finished up this that was in my fridge and just grabbed, I think, some mild cheddar, finely shredded, that I had in my freezer. Yes, you can freeze cheese in case you did not know that. If it's about to go bad or you don't use it or you find an amazing sale, I got this um, on sale at Meyer, and there was Ibotta rebates, so it was super cheap. Um, sometimes I'll get it free if I'm like combining a bonus. Yes, this is a lot of cheese, but remember it's two pounds of sausage and a whole dozen eggs, um, and it's gonna be used for many meals, so it'll be okay. I said before, it might not always be the healthiest, but Fed is best, whatever that looks like for you. And this is my cooking on a budget. This is what we have. Just try to pour over, kind of get it evenly distributed again. Sometimes I'll squish it down with a spoon to make sure everything's covered in egg. And again, I didn't pay for these eggs per se, but they came for my chickens. If you know anything about animals, you have to pay for food. Um, you have to create a place for them to live. All that stuff costs money. So I don't know if you can say these are free um, because chickens are actually um, quite an expense. But I didn't go to the store and buy these. My own chickens lay these eggs, which is incredible. So, all right. So that's what I'm kind of looking for. Just want to squish everything down. And um, I'm going to bake this. It is quite a bit. So I'm going to start it at probably 30 minutes, but I may have to go longer depending. So I'm going to check it out and we will keep you posted. Okay guys, here is our finished product. It was not quite cooked all the way through around 30 minutes. So I did put it in for about 12 more minutes. So 42 minutes again, just check it periodically. I'm sure most of you out there aren't going to be cooking this much at a time. 
Usually it's like 20 or 25 minutes. So just plan accordingly depending on how much you're going to cook. If you're going to cook this much, you might need 40, 45 minutes. So 42 minutes for me here. Um, it baked up really nicely. Hopefully you can see. Um, if it is a little bit shiny, it's because obviously we used sausage. Sausage has fat in it. Cheese has oils in it. If it um, gets too bad, I think this is fine. If it gets too bad, or maybe if you don't get enough of that grease out, like I showed you the trick with the paper towel, or if you decide to strain but don't get enough out, you can like blot this with a paper towel on top as well to absorb any extra um, like oil or grease, whatever you want to call it. Again, what we do is section, you can cut in like squares-ish. You can cut like pizza slices, pet pie slices, whatever. Um, however floats your boat. Um, I think this will be okay like moisture wise, but when I do them with like a lot of potatoes and stuff, like diced hash browns, cut potatoes, shredded potatoes, or like frozen, shredded frozen hash browns, um, it, they all go to the bottom and it kind of creates a bit of a dry experience with the potatoes and the egg like baking. Um, so it's best served with something on top. Some people use ketchup. If that's what floats your boat, go for it. Um, I like salsa, tomatoes, peppers. Um, you can make it with your own, you know, fruits and veggies, whatever you grow at your house and your garden or whatever, or buy it from the store. Just adds um, extra nutrition, of course, but then like some kind of moisture. Again, this, I didn't have potatoes, so it probably won't be too bad, but I do like to serve um, mine with some of this, um, my family's recipe of hot mustard. I can't share this um, because again, it's a family recipe, but I'm sure you can Google hot mustard, hot pepper relish, um, things like that. Um, and find something that you like and experiment with that or just buy it from somebody um, or eat it plain. So I'm going to cut me some because it's late and I'm hungry and it smells amazing. If you do not put Italian um, seasoning or at least oregano in your breakfast bakes, try it one time and I'm pretty sure that you will be hooked because I've made these a lot over time because again it's super budget friendly feeds a lot of people there's great um, good fats and good source of protein in eggs even if you don't have meat or if you want to just have ham it's just really versatile so breakfast bakes in general so I've made these a ton didn't until this year start putting Italian seasoning or at least oregano in my breakfast bakes and that was after I tested tasted some that a friend made changed the world add herbs of some sort in your breakfast bakes it will like take it to a whole new level so it smells amazing I'm excited to eat it and as you can see it is not dry at all so honestly you could do without salsa or um, like hot mustard my bowls a mess because I already tasted it I like to taste before I add any condiments or sauces or whatever if it's great just as is um, why add extra calories or sugar or whatever um, adding sauce if you don't even know same as there's plenty of people who just salt everything before they even taste it I'm not one of those people I do like this just as is I wouldn't even add anything except for I have so much hot mustard um, I'm sorry about the looks um, I have so much hot mustard in my basement that I have canned um, and these are from last year because I had so many peppers last year I didn't even can hot mustard this year um, so yeah so I'm gonna use as much as I can every bit I get and it's incredibly flavorful highly recommend hot mustard or hot pepper relish whatever your circle calls it um, and again it might not look the prettiest but it is incredibly delicious art is not my forte um, not giant, um, not incredibly skilled on making food look good, but um, thankfully I have been able to make food taste good. So there's that. It might not always be the prettiest, but it does taste good. So um, if you're like me and you have sloppy food and you don't have like Instagram worthy food pics, it's okay. If it feeds your family, that's great. If it tastes good, even better. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to show the final product and show you it certainly is not dry, um, so you could do without the um, ketchup or hot mustard or salsa. 
keep that in mind. Hope you like this. Hope you try it. If you are a fan of breakfast bakes and I shared anything helpful, let me know if you try it and um, how you liked it. And I hope you enjoy. I'm going to go eat this. Okay, not necessarily cooking on a budget uh, for this dinner, but it was a really long day and exhausting. So this is what we're having. My um, One of my gift cards came through. If you saw all of the money that we got back on the um, ice cream deals at Meijer, um, huge, huge money maker. I ended up making over $190 extra in addition to all of the free ice cream and chocolates and stuff. So, um, yep, this is dinner. We're having Chipotle and it was free with a gift card on Fetch thanks to those um, ice cream deals. So, this is our dinner for tonight. Today's dinner is going to be homemade-ish pizzas. Um, what I have, you can obviously make pizza dough from scratch at home. Maybe we'll do that on another video. Um, right now, I need to make room in my freezers. So, um, I grabbed all these um, pizza crusts or items we'll be using as pizza crusts out of my freezer. So, this is um, garlic, let's see, roasted garlic naan. Stone Fire, um, got it at the discount store. These over here, um, never had before, but I'm um, excited to try them. If Again, in my haul, remind me if you remember these. It was like three cents or 13 cents or 10 cents or something for each of these. They're like, I don't know, four or five dollars. They're found in the freezer section, um, if they're keto or whatever. Anyway, three net carbs, mini pizzas, has like 11 grams total protein and stuff. I don't know. Um, gonna try those for the very first time, so we'll see. And then also from the discount store, some um, non, I usually get these all 75% off. So they um, do really well, just as a quick, hey, I'm gonna make some pizzas. Again, super in a rush today. So I'm gonna use some spaghetti sauce that I got um, basically free. It was like two cents at Target a while back using like I bought a checkout 51 and um, swag bucks, I believe. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna spoon some spaghetti sauce on here. You can of course make your own. I actually have my own um, pizza sauce that I made from my own like fruits and vegetables in my garden, um, but it's frozen and I don't want to defrost it right now. I just freeze them. I have super cubes. Um, let me know if you've ever heard of them. They're just a really great quality um, product that, like, they're silicone. You can freeze stuff in. I usually do cubes and, um, like, a half cup portion, one cup portion, quarter cup portions, and um, stuff you can freeze, like lasagnas, um, all kinds of stuff. I freeze my yogurt starter. I freeze whey. I freeze, like... Anything you can imagine, um, I've probably freeze. But that's what I have my own pizza sauce that I made, and um, that's how I have it frozen. So if you just need for like if I want to like make one tortilla pizza or one naan or whatever, I can just um, defrost two tablespoons. Is how I have them frozen in portions. Um, I also have like quarter cup, I believe, frozen. But um, just defrost it or you know just warm it in the microwave and use that. Today I'm using this because it's fast and I have no idea how much I'm going to need because it's such a random thing I'm doing here with all these different types of bases as our pizza crust. So again, use what you have, use what you like. You can make your own with your family um, or buy pre-made. No judgment. Whatever works. So this is what we're doing. Hopefully these turn out well. I'm not even sure what these will be like. Will they shrink or are they going to stay that thick? I don't know. I don't really care for thick um, crust like that, but we'll find out together. So I'm just putting some um, sauce. Some of them I do a little more saucy, some a little bit less uh, because we all prefer something different in this house. So that's fun. Putting sauce down. Again, do as much or as little. You can add Italian seasonings if you want this to be a little bit more like pizza sauce. Uh, this is it for me. That's what we're doing today. Okay, next I will do my pepperoni. Usually I do like a ton.
Now just like that, I'm already finished. Look how fast that went. Okay, um, so now that I have the pepperoni on, I'm going to add some, I like basil on mine. This I grow in um, inside my house. It is the winter. I don't know my plants. My leaves are so small. If you follow um, my Cooking on a Budget post on our Facebook group, you'll see before I had um, beautiful large um, basil leaves. Not right now. It's a different plant. Um, it's also winter and winter essentially anyway close enough um it's colder inside and due to the holidays i actually moved my basil plant to my office which is like a refrigerator so it's really cold i'm actually using um an aero garden light because my plant is separate um to heat it up a little bit so hopefully it'll perk up and um they will grow bigger so I'm just going to um, sprinkle some of these with basil. My stepdaughter doesn't like basil, so I'm not going to put basil on all of them. I know what kind of weird people don't like basil. Again, if you don't like it, you can um, also leave it off. Um, while I'm adding this, I was going to add fresh mozzarella, but it had gotten open and it spoiled. So there's that. Um, I was able to get some, I do have some creamy shredded um, mozzarella from that deal I got at Meijer and using Ibotta in a sale and different stuff. So um, I'm going to finish up what I have in this bag and then I did grab this out of the freezer. So again, freezer cheese, okay, it came in handy. So I'm going to top this and if anybody's curious, this is the pepperoni. A lot of stores have been out of pepperoni. I don't know why. I like to go get mine at the um, local discount store. Um, it's not discounted, but it is made locally and um, it's really delicious and kind of essentially the same price as Walmart. So I like to get that, but I'm not leaving my house anytime soon. So again, we're using what we have. So after this, I just top with cheese. And in the mean, in the background, I do have um, the oven preheating to 400, I believe. Um, I do know that the non will do well at that temperature. Again, I've never cooked these like three net carbs. I don't know, they're super popular. Let me know in the comment section if you've ever made them and any tips to share because, like I said, they were like three cents or eight cents or something crazy. Um, so I have plenty of them in my freezers to use up. So I would love your tips. All right, didn't even cover two non with that. So now I'm just gonna use the plus it will be frozen cheese and it will, it is finely shredded. So it will um, cook just as fine. It'll taste just the same. No one will know. Just gen you can be as generous or whatever. Again, this is just cooking on a budget, okay? This is my meal. If you have, um, I do actually have bell peppers and jalapenos and stuff in the freezers and fridge. Um, again, I'm in a hurry, so this is what we have. Don't come for me because I don't have uh, vegetables. I'm just being real. This is what we're doing today. No vegetables. Shh. If you haven't noticed already, generally when I'm cooking, I'm making a mess. So if you make a mess, more power to you. It'll be okay. Or have your kids help you and then you can blame the mess on them. It's not that big of a deal because I'm the one that cleans it up. So it's not like I'm making anyone else's job hard. But mine. One day maybe I'll be clean in the kitchen. Okay. That's about it. I'm going to put them in the oven at 400 degrees. 8 to 12 minutes on these non. No idea about these, but I will let you know. Okay, guys, I'm giving you this view now because I'm actually not going to be able to pull these out before I have to leave. So my husband's going to pull them out, and I will show you the final product of a piece that I will be eating after I have ministry. But I had to leave for prison ministry, so this looks like leftover pizza instead of, um, like, freshly made with the sauce bubbling, etc. Um, but this is our dinner for tonight. It is just pizza with pepperoni, mozzarella, and basil.
So tonight I don't know exactly what to call our dinner, but what I'm going to be making somehow is kibasi, egg noodles, probably some butter noodles, and sauerkraut. The sauerkraut I got free, my dad makes it, um, and this I got for like a dollar thirteen or something per pound originally, but um, I got this at Sam's Club and used their Shopkicks deal and it automatically like submitted my receipt twice and so when i bought the deals on sam's club like the tarani syrup um for like 34 cents a really large one um and some other things that were like super cheap on sam's club it actually gave me double the money back so this was a money maker so i got this free along with a ton of other stuff there were four of these in a pack i got four tarani syrups um two big things of krill oil and something else some jimmy dean sausage like breakfast sandwiches and some kind of like philly cheesesteak things that i've never tried but um yeah i got all of that for free plus like 13 dollars money maker so um check out your shop kicks if you don't have that rebate app i do have a link in the description box you can use and get a bonus i think it's like a one or two dollars um, when you sign up, when you use it. So go to the store, even if you don't buy anything, just scan a product barcode in the store and you should be able to get that bonus. Gonna do, I don't know, I got um, water I'm gonna start boiling. I'm gonna fry up some kielbasa. I don't even know how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna figure it out. I never um, have fried up sauerkraut before, but I want it so bad and I know we're gonna have it um, in New Year's and there's so much here, so I'm just gonna figure it out. I have the water going. I'm going to put salt and oil in here. I know like professional cooks say that putting oil in your pasta water is a rookie move. I do cook all the time. I don't really care about um, all of the semantics. I do put vegetable oil, canola oil, whatever I'm using and salt in any pasta water that I do, um, obviously because the salt flavors the water and the oil keeps the pasta, like the while the pasta's cooking, you know, sometimes it'll boil over if you're not watching it. Yeah, the oil stops that from happening. So um, I do that. Professionals don't put oil in their water because um, the oil makes it hard for any um, sauce to stick to the pasta once it's finished cooking. I don't really care. And honestly, I'm probably going to do like butter noodles with these. Um, maybe I'll fry them in the pan with some corn or something. I don't know what I'm gonna do just yet. It's late. This is quick and easy. I already have it in my, you know, at my house. And so yeah, I'm gonna put oil and salt in here. Always salt your water um, for pasta because it helps flavor it. It's up to you whether you want to do the um, oil in here or not. I'm usually doing a hundred things at once, so the oil. Um, to me is a no-brainer because I don't have to watch this continuously and it will never ever uh, Like boil over so I'm happy with that do what you want um, I'm gonna get the kibasi cut up somehow and figure it out and then I'll show you what it looks like here shortly Okay, so this is what I decided to do with my kibasi couldn't decide usually I'll leave it in longer strips Sometimes I'll slice it. I kind of like met myself in the middle um, do what you feel you want to do. Um, my noodles are pretty much done. I like to overcook my noodles again. I know that's an amateur move by a lot of people who consider themselves cooks or chefs. I like my noodles this way. Make make whatever how you want. Um, I'll be showing in a video probably in the next week or two um, how to make homemade pasta. So that's something you can look into. Um, anyway, I'm going to pull my kibasi out of the pan. And um, as you can see, I do have some stuff stuck to, maybe you can see, yeah, I do have some stuff stuck to the pan, um, I did it on purpose, I know probably everybody says that when they're cooking, I really did, and I'm going to show you, um, because this is cooking on a budget, but it's also some, like, tips as I go to help people who don't cook, who feel overwhelmed because they don't know what they're doing, um, feel silly asking because maybe they're older or, um, whatever, so here we are, I'm going to show you this tip. And actually, restaurants will do this too. I'm gonna just set my um, kibasi aside. I like the caramelization and the color. That's flavor. Okay, here we have all this stuck to the pan. Okay, you'll be scrubbing this for a hundred years. Um, if you take it off and cool it down, or even try to soak it, it won't work. Plus, this is very expensive. Don't soak this pan because they're very expensive. Anyway. 
the heat's on, right? Just gonna put a little bit of water. Restaurants use like um, wine, all kinds of stuff. I don't use wine, you can just use water. Um, if you weren't gonna do anything else, you could just simmer this and like kind of scrape it with a spoon or whatever. Um, as this simmers, it'll like deglaze the pan so it'll get all of that bits off of the bottom so it'll be unstuck, see how, yeah, beautiful. Um, so I know this is kind of probably because I waited too long talking. Um, that's the prettiest color. Again, I don't, um, you know, score high on presentation with my food necessarily um, because it doesn't always look good, but it's going to taste good. So I'm going to go ahead and let this simmer a little bit to cook out some of that liquid. And then I'm just going to throw my um, sauerkraut in this pan to get that flavor um, that was like caramelized with the kibasi, um and just cook it a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, also, if you're watching this and you're local and you're interested in buying some sauerkraut, my dad does his own. Um, you can buy in all kinds of sizes. You don't have to buy something this big and you don't have to buy something this small. Anyway, um, that's a good option. So me, um, I know everybody likes to think of money and will these people do this to make money or whatever. Um, in my eyes, it's all about like sustainability. So I might not necessarily have money to pay somebody for um, sauerkraut or even go buy it at the store, but I make homemade yogurt. I have chickens who lay eggs. And um, so that's something you can trade. Like, hey, um, you make homemade cornbread. I don't want to do that. I don't want to buy Jiffy. Can I give you some eggs for that? Or um, like I'll trade my dad yogurt for stuff all the time. Um, now I can give him eggs. I went and gave him some eggs a couple, like last week or so. Um, I don't even remember what I went over there for this time. And um, he gave me some sauerkraut. So obviously you can bless people with what you have, but you can also trade people um, and sell stuff. So just keep that in mind. You can trade um, various things with what you have. And it doesn't always have to be about money, money, money. So. Keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and throw this in. I wash my hands continuously, so don't cringe at the sight of me doing this. Here we are. I'm just going to use my hands. You can, of course, use tongs if you're more comfortable with that or you don't want to touch your food. Totally get it. This smells amazing. Actually, to be honest, I already tasted some. It is amazing. So I know this looks like a lot. It'll cook down a little bit because it's just cabbage. It's mostly water, honestly. Um, <clears throat> not even going to add corn. I'm going to strain my noodles and just kind of make them like uh, butter noodles. Fry up this, might add a little bit more. I guess I'll probably have to get more kraut from my dad. So uh, let me know if you're local and you're interested. I can give you his information um, if you want some sauerkraut for New Year's coming up, which we always like it throughout the year. I eat it anyway. It's actually really good for you. But a lot of people also do it New Year's Eve. So I'm going to strain my noodles and um, add a little butter fry up this quickly and then I'll show you what our finished product is. Okay, so this is the final product. Um, just added the kibasi back in to make it warm again. I just wanted to show you um, all of that stuff that um, was on the pan is not on there. Again, just deglaze with some water, even if you're done. Just add some water and um, it'll get all that sticky stuff off and be super easy to clean. Noodles, again, just made on butter noodles. Quick, easy, it's late, and we're ready to eat. I'm just serving um, the noodles on the bottom, then the sauerkraut and the kibasi. You can do mashed potatoes, instant potatoes, uh, whatever floats your boat, egg corn in there, other veggies. Um, but yep, this is our dinner for tonight, and that's our last dinner for the um, one week of dinners of our cooking on a budget. So, hope you liked it, and um, give this video a thumbs up. Okay guys, surprise ending. If you made it this far through this video, I know it was a lot after all of the dinners, um, pieces, and parts were put together. Um, it was for a whole week, so, and I wanted to add in some tips to help you save money, save time in the kitchen, etc. 
If you watched it all the way through this video and got to this point, I want to give you an opportunity for a giveaway. So I'm going to have some decals made that you can either put on your coupon binder, coupon file, um, laptop, notebook, car, um, tablet, whatever you want. It'll look something like this. All you need to do is like this video, be a subscriber, be a member of Coupon Nerds Facebook group, and comment anything on this video about the content. So something you liked or a tip that I had shared, anything about this video, just comment it down below. And if you're interested, go follow us on a Coupon Nerds Instagram as well. Um, again, I'm not quite active on there yet. I'm still trying to learn all the things. So, um, yep, if you're interested in winning one of these decals, I can um, send it to one person. I'll do a random selection in about two weeks or so. Um, we'll see somewhere around Christmas. So we'll see what that looks like. Comment down below um, anything about the video and make sure you meet the other requirements. And I can't wait to find out who is going to win this decal.